I had to invent this person. David Goggins is an introverted, um, soft kid that got beat up growing up and mindset had, had to lie to create friends, to get friends, to be accepted. So um, my, my life has really been about two people. Very scary, but two people. I had to invent a whole other human being to get outside of my comfort zone. And that human being became Goggins. Goggins is like the guy that walks out of the, out of the phone booth. He's like that Superman that walks out of the phone booth. And I was talking to my fiance today about, it's kind of strange how sometimes I have a conversation between David Goggins and Goggins. And Goggins will tell David Goggins about the shit he's done. And David Goggins like, what the hell, man? Why are you doing that? That's nuts. So it's, it's kind of this battle between trying to find more of yourself, knowing that the real you is afraid, likes comfort, likes living in a world that is uh, that likes to pat you on the back, give you the things that you want to hear, not the things that you have to hear to get better. So that's where all this kind of started from. And when people hear this podcast, they're going to hear a lot of things that they're going to want to put a title on me. They're going to definitely want to put a title on me to make themselves feel better. I asked them during this podcast, do not do that. Do not look at what you're going to hear. Put a title on me because basically what you're doing is you're giving yourself a get out of jail free card. Exactly. It's all you're doing. It's all you're doing is saying this guy was some super freak. He found some super thing in his brain that was locked up. He unleashed it and became this guy. It's a fucking lie. Because every day I wake up, I dread the day. I dread the day of what I'm going to bring on myself to get better. You know, I was sitting on the couch, saw this show on Discovery Channel, and that started the process of, I think I want to be a Navy SEAL. So I started calling up different recruiters, walking into some. Some guy said to me, you're fat and you're black. He was an observant motherfucker. You know, I was 300 yeah. pounds, <laughs> black guy walking, he was very observant. So that kind of went on for a while. And um, until I met one recruiter, and one recruiter saw something in me that no one else saw, and gave me a shot, and gave me a shot. And a challenge, right? Uh, Come back, lose the weight. Right. So basically, I walked in. I had about three months, a little less than three months, to lose 106 pounds. So I was like, "This is fucking impossible, man. I can't do that." And at that time, I had no real drive right. to be a Navy SEAL, to be anything. I just knew something had to change. That I, I had to, that this isn't gonna work, man. That this lifestyle that I'm living, something has to change. So I went to work that day and I was spraying for cockroaches and lo and behold, it's a very bad day at work. I found a whole bunch of cockroaches, rodents. It's a bad restaurant. And I came home, I quit my job that day. I was driving home, I said, I gotta, I gotta fucking do something. And I said, I'm gonna go home and run four miles. And four miles is only a quarter mile. And then from there, the story really begins from that right. point. Well, that's what I realized for myself was I wanted that comfort zone that everybody looks for, that pat on the back. They don't want to hear all the bad shit. They want to hear everything that they're doing right. And I realized that's what kept me in this world. That's what kept me in this world of not accomplishing anything. So what I did was I became that big, bad, nasty motherfucker that you don't want to walk into at nighttime. I became the roughest critic in the world on myself. And that's what changed me. I literally saw myself in the mirror. I saw the truth versus saying, you know, my dad did this to me from, you know, from beating me. Kids in school from calling me did this to me. My life did this to me. My fucked up, broken foundation did this to me. I took that and said, you know what? Well. Some people may help this happen, but now I have to own this. No one's going to come back to save me. No one's going to come back on this fucking couch and say, hey, it's okay. You're going to be okay. No, I'm not. I'm not going to be okay. I had to realize I had to take a stand. I had to make a real stand. And it was painful to look at who I, like who I was, what the world and myself created. It created a... A, a, a very lonely, depressed, insecure man that would do anything just to have a friend. And I saw that as very pathetic. When you look at the truth, it becomes very ugly and pathetic. 
I'm really good at creating an enemy. I'm really good at, at, at creating something that I'm against. And I'm also good at if you ever tell me something that I cannot do, I'm going to let you know that I'm doing it. Right. Somehow, somehow you're going to fucking know one way or another that I'm doing it. It may not be like in your face. It may, I may make sure that I run across the daggone world. So then it's on the news and you turn the news on and say, how the hell <laughs> did he do that? I want to do something that you know I'm here. I'm here. So every, every time I lose like a big significant amount of weight, I call that recruiter up and say, hey man, I'm here. I'm here. And before I knew it, man, this guy became almost like my best friend at that time. Because he started seeing, I started actually changing his life. You know, I started, you know, he started seeing, wow, man, like, I'm glad I took a shot on this guy. Right. And I, and not only did I lose weight, I had to go back and take the ASVAB test to give us like a watered down SAT a couple more times just to get in the Navy SEAL. So it was a big process. So that, so that three months was packed full of like failures, depression, even more. But what I found out in that whole three months, I lived a lifetime. In that three months, I started realizing if I can flip, if I can flip these insecurities upside down, if I can flip this fear, if I can flip all this shit that made me this depressed, insecure guy, if I can flip it and make it work for me versus against me, I started seeing the power, the power in failure, the power in insecurity, the power in self-doubt. Because I looked at everybody, it may not be true, but that's how I looked at everybody, it's being way above me. I thought to myself, if I can be at the lowest part in the world, in the sewer, and be able to overcome all this shit, I started using that as power. And I slowly started passing the guys from Harvard, the guys from MIT, the guys who were these great, from great families and shit. I'm like, oh my God, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. I had nothing. So I started flipping it and using that as power. Well, there's something that I invented a long time ago. And when you have nothing to draw from, I was able to find strength in every molecule of this earth. I'm able to be in a room with nothing, with no motivation, no inspiration, nothing, and find it. So what I did in those situations was I invented this thing called taking souls. When everybody's all fucked up and you're exhausted and you're weak and you're tired and you're looking around and everybody looks as bad as you or even worse. I'm like, you know what? I want to now make a statement. It's the perfect time to make a statement. To make a statement to let you know where your life ends and mine begins. And so the statement there is I muster up every bit of strength from their looks on their faces and how they feel and how I'm going to now from my childhood where I came from, how I was the bottom of the barrel. I'm now amongst all these uncommon people. I'm now going to now make you feel like you're common. So I use their, their sadness, their weakness, their parts of their life where, God, this sucks. I'm like all poopy pants and messed up. I use that for my strength. And I have this moment of like, let's say we're in the sand, we're running or whatever. I will do a surge. I will do something. And everybody's like, how the fuck is he doing this? And from that, that look on their face, that feeling of, God, man, this guy must be something, something special, it then surges me further and further and faster and harder for a long time. So it's energies everywhere. But the thing is, it's so loud that that, that voice in your head of pain and suffering and discomfort and I don't want to do this is so loud that you're unable to really calm it down and say, okay, there's something here. It's a patient calm that you have to bring yourself to say, I know I have something here, but that voice is so powerful that it just wants you just to, let's leave. Right. We're done. We're done. It's, it spazzes you out and you want to go versus saying, let's take a second. Hang on. Before we spaz the fuck out, hang on. And in that moment, you can think clearly and find that strength out there for you. I'm the only person in the history of the military who has ever gone through Air Force um, um, Tactical Air Control Party training, um, Army Ranger School, where I was an Army man um, in three hell weeks. Yeah. So only person ever do that. But the reason why I did it was when I was a young kid, 
I consider myself very weak, very weak. And as I started developing this indestructible mental toolbox, because what I realized was the things I was like most afraid of, I cowered from. Mm -hmm. I had to start facing these things and becoming an expert at the things I feared the most. Yeah. I was afraid of my own mind. My mind would get off on these crazy places of woe is me. Mm-hmm. My, my internal conversation wasn't great. Yeah. So I had to start mastering it. Once I started mastering it in the horrible place I was at, I was literally, I consider myself the worst person ever alive. That was my conversation. But once I started mastering my own life, I started realizing, my God, man, this was in me. Yeah. I was a 300 pound fat guy. Now I'm 181 pounds, 190 pounds, whatever it was. I'm gonna go through all these hell weeks. Mm-hmm. So I started realizing the capabilities of the human soul and the human mind. Yeah. So I started to examine it more and more. So we have a theorist and we have a practitioner. Mm-hmm. The theorist is a person that's gonna sit back and read books mm-hmm. from a library that someone else wrote. They become real smart about what someone else wrote, okay? A practitioner is a man is me. I put myself in hell, lived in it for a long time, and figured out how the human mind works while being, while suffering, while in pain, while misery, and that's how I wrote my book. Yeah. I want to tell you exactly what your mind is thinking. Most of us don't stay in hell long enough to write the book. Yeah. I stayed in long enough to write it and finish the book. So I call it in my book here, it's called The Accountability Mirror but it's called raw accountability. Yeah. Not just accountability where we find that nice happy word. Yeah. If you're fat, and you look in the mirror and say, wow, I eat a little too much. No, you're fucking fat. Cannot say that to yourself. <laughs> no. But see, you have to make a list yeah. of the things that you don't like to do. Mm-hmm. This list should be very long. Like if you don't like making calls. Yeah. Yep. The very first thing you should do is start making a shit ton of fucking calls. Yep. Because why? That begins to own you. Yes. You start to drive yourself this way versus this way. But you'll figure out, if you start making a whole bunch of fucking calls, if you like calling, call a lot. Yeah. Guess what happens? You get over it. You get over it. So what we do a lot is, I I heard a lot of people say, triple down on this, triple down on most of your strength. No, 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 no. That works for a lot of things. But when you're afraid and you don't have the courage you have to triple down on your weaknesses and make that become where you start to guide yourself. Okay, I'm like calling. Today I'm making 100 calls. Yeah. I'm going to dial 100 times. When I was younger, life and society made this big world with all these endless fucking possibilities. Yeah. Endless possibilities. My life made my possibilities this fucking big. Because it made me afraid of all these different things. Yeah. So all this stuff trapped my mind. It shackled my brain. It made me a prisoner within my own self saying, Mm -hmm. this is all I can do. Because why? I'm afraid of this. I'm insecure over here. I got self-doubt over here. Back behind me. Good Lord. Who knows what's behind me? I'm like, look behind me. So your life is this big. Versus it being like, I can do all this shit out here if I start to break down these these, these, these different walls and barriers. And that's what I started realizing. I could become a Navy SEAL. I could become this, but I was afraid of the water. Think about this. I know. Why the fuck are you gonna go be a Navy SEAL when all you do is play in the water? Yeah. For, and we don't play, we're in it and we're living in it. You're tired of the ocean. You're swimming for miles. That's right, the ocean is unforgiving. Yeah. Yeah. So my mind is, I'm gonna go be a Navy SEAL. Yeah. If I didn't face that fear, no one would ever know me. I was number three behind Michelle Obama for a long time until my book sold out. Yeah. And I was a guy just 21 years ago yeah. who was 300 pounds, could barely read and write, mm-hmm. and now I have a book just two spots behind Michelle Obama. Yeah. Just because I was afraid. Yeah. But you overcome those fears, guess what happens? The whole world, you unlock this door and everything opens back up again. So this is what I say to myself. It changes all the time. So let's say I'm training for a 100 mile race and I get to mile 50 Yeah. and I feel like shit. Mm-hmm. And like everybody else, my mind gets soft. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I'm human. Yeah. I'm not some damn, you know, hybrid creature that was formed from the heavens above. No, 
not human. I suffer, I don't like it, I'm uncomfortable, I don't like it. Yeah. So my mind starts to get weak and we start to forget about how badass we are. I call that the cookie jar, but it's not about the cookie jar right now. Yeah. This is about self-talk. Yeah. But, but the cookie jar kind of goes to self-talk too. It. Yeah. It's a piece of it. So basically what I do here is you have to make sure that your mind doesn't become spastic. Mm -hmm. When it's suffering, when it's in pain, all it wants to do is find the easy way out, which is usually quit. Mm -hmm. If you quit, the pain goes away immediately. Yeah. You gotta give yourself enough energy and fuel in your mind to stay just a little bit longer so you can talk yourself into staying for the whole thing. Yeah. This is how it works. Most of us never start anything cold. If you're gonna go to college, you gotta study your ass off. If you wanna run a 100 mile race, a marathon, if you wanna go be Mr. Olympia, if you wanna go be a scientist, a doctor. Be one of the best salespeople on the planet. You be gotta work. You gotta work. But this and is what you, you gotta do. build, you, you gotta, gotta build, build. Up to that. But what happens is, in that moment, when we need self-talk, when we're failing, and we're in our worst spot possible, yep. we forget the front end. The, all the build up to where we're at today. We forget that we put years, yeah. years, maybe not into making these dials, but to getting where you're at today. To become this person. To become this person, to be in a position to make this money, whatever the fuck you wanna make, whatever you wanna do in your life. Yeah. We forget that. We forget that journey on what it took for us to get in this moment to make the right decision. Yeah. So that's my self talk is this. Okay, I wanna get the fuck out of here, man. I'm done. Then I remember this. You ran 2,000 miles training to be in this moment right now. Mm -hmm. We forget that. Yep. We forget the three o'clock in the morning runs or, or getting up early for work or whatever you're doing. We forget all that. In that moment of suffering, I remind myself, yeah. I only have 50 more miles. I put in six months of training. So what I do, my self-talk is basically going back down memory lane. Yeah. Of all those fucked up days, I ran the fucking rain, or I had to fucking study real late at night, and I didn't want to do it, but I did it to get here. Yeah, that's the hook. That is the hook. That's the hook. I wanted to get here. Yeah. Now you're here, and now you want to fucking quit. Yeah. So you gotta be mindful. But this, but this thing about it, if you haven't put in any hard work to reflect on, you're fucked. people want to be all positive all this positive talk it doesn't work if it's a lie like if you didn't study for your big exam mm -hmm. and you go into it saying i'm going to pass it yeah no you're not yeah you're gonna fucking fail it yeah that self-talk is not going to work self-talk without real work is just a lie yeah so my self-talk is me reminiscing back on the struggle to get to this moment yeah. and that tells me we're not quitting today yeah not today yeah. So basically, you have to put yourself in the moment a million times while I'm sitting here. First of all, it takes total quietness. Mm -hmm. We live in a world that's so busy and so active and moving so fast. Right now, I am sitting with Tom Ferry. Yeah. My mind is sitting with Tom Ferry. Yeah. It's not talking to Tom Ferry while thinking about, my God, I gotta order some more books. I'm sold out of here. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Yeah. That's the first thing about visualization. Yep. You must make sure to silence out all the fucking bullshit of life, which is very hard to do. It is very hard. Because the, your, your visual picture must be clear as shit. It has to be clear. It can't be like kind of in and out like a, like a fuzzy TV. You got to see it. It has to become real. You got to take a snapshot of it a million times, put in the bank. That snapshot of me was getting that 4,000 21 pull up yeah. knocked out because the record was 4,020. Yeah. I visualized that over and over and over again. So I visualized yeah. success. Uh -huh. But then I went through, that's the, that's the fun part. Yeah. I have to do 4,020 pull ups to get to that 4,021 pull up. Yeah. I know now because it took me three chances yep. to get it. All those failures. They were great for me to examine where I was fucking up at along the way. So I take all that and I, and I put in the bank as far as visualization. Okay, when I get to 2,500 pull-ups, my hands start to rip. Okay, I get ready for that. So I started visualizing, how am I going to handle the pain? Mm -hmm. Okay, then you start visualizing, okay, my, my nutrition was off. You start visualizing all these things because yeah. 
you have to mimic it a million times, but I can't mimic 4,020 pull-ups no. by doing it. But you can see but all the I milestones where you the, failed. That's right. And see yourself going beyond it. That's right. Yeah. So that that was my big thing about I, I had to walk in, get the chalk, see I, I had to see everything over and over and over again. And when I realized I had to keep that visual, that picture in my head mm -hmm. for 17 hours. It took me 17 hours to break that record. Yeah. So for 17 hours, while I used to be loud everywhere I went, I put these headphones in. Yeah. I never listened to music, but I listened to one song going the distance. You know, for 17 hours, it's two minutes and 13 seconds. Yeah. For 17 hours, I had that in. That's a lot of Rocky. A lot of Rocky. And I just went here. Yeah. For And so I was able to visualize every rep. Yeah. So I, I visualized my hand placement, making sure that felt right before I got going. Mm -hmm. I didn't ignore all the little pains. My hands got sweaty. Okay, that means I was aware of everything. That means, my, okay, my hand's about to rip. It's getting sweaty. Wipe it off. Be aware. Everything. I was totally in the moment because of how I visualized everything.